How's it going, everybody? It's the last day of uh, Days of the Dead, Atlanta for 2014. We're hanging out here at the Sheraton in uh, my beautiful hotel room with the Peyton Saint of the Underground, Fred Vogel. How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you? And thanks a lot for coming up and talking to us. Now, uh, a couple questions. The mo- Your first movie, and probably the one you're probably still best known for, is August Underground. Now, you've said before that your main goal with that was to show the ugly side of serial killers and how, you know, these are not cool people, this is what goes on. Do you think most of the audience really got that, or was it, you know, is there a certain audience that's just kind of getting off on the violence and going the whole other route with it? I think it's, it's done a little bit of both. Uh, I think maybe at first, that's what people got from it. Right. But I think when people started hearing me talk about the movies, and they listened to the commentary, or... Now that it's been, you know, 12 years, mm-hmm. whoever's turned them on has been, has been like, hey, this is not this is more about this, not right. about that. But, uh, you know, people take it for all different ways. Um, I love it when uh, I talk to fans of August Underground and they get it. Right. They understand what it's all about. So that's really, you know, that's important to me. But, you know, of course I get fans that are like, Fred, this is the sickest fucking shit. I love right. it. You know, but... Hey man, you know it's a horror movie. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. supposed to be. Sick. Don't overthink it, but you know, as an artist, you put certain things into it. And you hope that you get certain things out, but people will interpret art in all different ways. So, right. I'm not a judge. Now, over the years, there's been a lot of people that kind of mistook that movie for the real thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, today, like people are more media savvy, but we also live in the age of like the internet hoax. You know, do you think people now would be easier to fool with something like that, or would it be more difficult? You know what? It's it's weird. Um, I'm gonna say my film, The Murder Collection, mm-hmm. is pretty much a take on like what's going on now. Right. And st- I've seen clips of, from Murder Collection on sites like Ogrish or the right. YNC, and I've also seen the August Underground movies have clips on there as well. So people uh, people put it up. You know, I'm just right. to probably to be like, actually, these guys think it's real. Yeah, that's the cool thing about the August Underground movies is that you can play that trick on people that you don't know mm-hmm. and get that reaction. Yeah, um, and I think that's really cool. That is cool. Now, uh, Mortem mm-hmm. was kind kind of a it's kind of the different from the rest of the trilogy in that number one, you're not the sole director. Mm-hmm. It was really a collaborative effort. There's a lot of you know writers and directors, you know, credited. Like what was the what led to it being more of a collaborative piece, and how did that work for you as opposed to you being solely in charge? Well, August Underground's Mortem started off as a music video for Necrophagia. Okay. Um, when I made August Underground, uh, I was contacted by Killjoy from Necrophagia, mm-hmm. and he wanted to. You know, he was from Ohio. I was from Pittsburgh. He was like, "Dude, we need to do something together. Um, why don't we do like a, an August Underground kind of video for one of my songs?" Right. And uh, myself. And Michael Schneider, we went up to Killjoys, we shot a few scenes, then we started shooting more scenes, and then Christy Wiles ended up getting involved because she was started to do some of the artwork. And of course, at the same time, Jeremy Cruz was involved, you know, to pulling off all the makeup effects. Right. So it was like, I have all these really great people having, you know, all these different ideas. Mm-hmm. Now, as all that's going on, Rue Morgue drops. The, uh, their issue with August Underground on the cover saying the most right. disturbing film ever made and I wake up to mass emails from all over the world people want the movie so I kind of was like you know this is cool I'm doing this thing with Necrophagia but now people are really taking notice of my movie like I should probably try to get behind it and see where this can go try to get more reviews out there let's you know try to get just distribution I didn't know what to do it's my first movie right. and uh as the scenes we kept shooting for what would become August Underground's Mortem had just got it would just grow and grow and these scenes would get bigger and bigger and you know we talked about it and it was like we should just really just make this the sequel to August Underground and I never wanted to make a sequel to August Underground right. you know I didn't really care about it but I was like you know what hey is the, as a businessman I had to start thinking like a businessman and I'm like you know what maybe this is a good thing maybe let's call this August Underground's Mortem it's a sequel and, you know, let's see where it goes. I went away, as we were finishing up, I went away to Europe with Killjoy and shot a documentary over there called Success for their European tour in 2003. Right. When I came back home, Michael Schneider finally finished the edit of the movie. Okay. And Christy Wiles ended up leaving, and, like, I was like, what the hell's going on? 
and Jeremy was like, "Well, you need to watch the movie." So when I was also when I was away, they were we planned our first premiere. So like all this stuff was happening right when right. I right when I was coming back. So I watched the movie and I'm hardly in it. And Michael was was pretty much cutting my character out. It was okay. becoming more Christy and him in the movie. And I imagine why I'd be more him in yeah. the movie. But well, he's I just, editing I, it. Yeah, okay. I just you know well, the whole thing with that was like Christy and Michael were so fascinated by August Underground, right? And it was just like you know they were they were more method than me. Okay. You know, those guys would you know Christy would she, in the movie she cuts herself and oh, so that's you know, real. Oh, it's all real. Okay, and. That shit blew my mind because you know I'm a movie maker. It's movie magic. Right. You don't need to cut yourself. Every bit of blood is yeah. is, is fake. But these guys were just taking it to this next level, and that was the kind of like it was different. It was totally different. And I wasn't feeling it. So when I came back, I we talked to Christy. We kind of like were like, all right, this is what's going to happen. I'm taking back control of August Underground because that's mine. Right. And this movie, like this is my movie, like. So I, we ended up parting ways with Michael Schneider after the premiere, the first premiere of the movie. And I went back in and shot new scenes, like the opening scene where you see her having sex with her brother, and pretty much plot points that would make you let you know that that's her brother, I'm the boyfriend, just right. kind of little, little things that yeah. would make it more, you know, people would understand it more. And... Uh, you know, when it was all said and done, I still kept it as it was directed by the four of us right. because I looked at it as this is a this is a jumping point for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, let Michael be able to bounce a career off this. Let Chris be able to bounce a career off this. Let Jeremy, myself, right. Killjoy, like everybody gets an opportunity. Right. And you know, once the dust settled and we put it out, you know, and the more I've, I've watched it, and the more I hated it. Because it was just what it wasn't really what I wanted. All these years later, you know, I, I really I love the movie because it brought Christy to, it brought Christy more into toe tag. Right. Um, you know, and the movie has become infamous yeah. in, in the world of horror. But I knew that as a filmmaker, I needed to come back and fix what I didn't like about it. Okay. And that's where August Underground's Penance came in, and it was my way of just being like, all right. I'm taking back what is mine, mm -hmm. and I'm going to show people like this is what this is what August Underground's Mortem should have been, right? You know, it also seems like kind of almost the most the most chaotic and almost angry of the movies. Was that the, the result of the personalities involved? Is that just where you guys were at the time? It, you know? Yeah, it, no, it really was. Well, it, it was so different because you know, like I said, Christy and Michael were both very method, right? And Jeremy and I were, you know. We would shoot a scene, you know, and Jeremy and I would be like, okay, we're done cleaning up, making sure the actors are okay, and then her, Christy and Michael would still be in character and, like, running around, like, still wanting to kill shit, you know? Right. And I just, I just couldn't, I just didn't understand that. Okay. So, you know, to me, it was just like, how, how are these people, how are they not being like me? Yeah. You know, like, how can you, time to clean up. Right. This is work. All right, take yeah. the light, you know what I mean? Take this stuff down and we're done. Mm -hmm. And... It literally took them time to to get over that stuff, but I just think they thought they needed to be that raw to go there. And, I, and if they weren't that raw, the movie wouldn't be as nasty as it is. So right. uh, I don't fault them at it. I think at the mm -hmm. time, you know, I was twenty five years old, and Christy, I think, was you know just twenty one, and Michael was twenty three. Uh, we were just young and hungry and wanted to do something crazy, and it right. was re that's what it really what it was. It was just crazy artists. Being artists, making art—it was—it's yeah. it's an art film. Yeah, uh, you mentioned in there making sure actors are okay. If, if being in a toe tag flick is a pretty fucking intense gig, yeah. Have you ever had an actor come on set and not be able to handle it? Uh, the problems that I had with the actors, um, some sometimes it was like the boyfriend of the, the girl who's in the movie was like. Yeah, you can have my girlfriend naked in the movie, and then like him being like, "No, no, no," and right. wanting to fight me or something like that. Yeah, um, we had a problem in August Underground's Mortem with in the end scene of the movie. There's a woman hanging upside down, and uh, I slit her throat. It's the end of the movie. Well, we shot that scene with another actress, and little did we know that this actress had a drug problem. 
So after three hours of makeup work and getting her rigged and the blood tubes because the girl's naked hanging upside down, so we had to literally have tubes like taped to her back around and everything. Uh, she ends up going into a drug fit. Oh God! And you know, I don't. We don't do drugs. Yeah. You know, I smoke pot. Right. So it was just like you know when someone's begging for heroin and I'm like, hey, I got a joint in the car <laughs> yeah. or something, you know. Uh, it really was terrifying. So you know, you had to I had to fire her, and thank God, you know, Shelby, uh, my wife, was my wife at the time. But she said, "Hey, uh, you know, let's do this tomorrow or whatever." And we shot it with her, and we did. It was awesome. Oh yeah. Um, you said you originally didn't plan on there being a sequel to August Underground. Yeah. When you decided to make Mortem a sequel, did you immediately say, "I need to make this a trilogy," or did it did the idea for the third one just come out later in time? Um. It, I, I knew when it was done that I was gonna, I was going to do a third one. Okay, but it, I it, I didn't know when I was going to do it, mm-hmm. and I didn't know if it was going to be like the first two and just be that cinema verite style. Right. I was going to intermingle the half like ha- half cinema verite and half linear. Right. So you're like watching almost two movies. Okay. You, you know, um, and it was just really a way to show my fans and people and the reviewers and the naysayers that I can I'm not just some one trick pony that makes these snuff movies. Right. And then I can actually make a movie movie. Well, going, okay, speaking of making movie movies, um, probably my favorite of your flicks is Cell Okay. Um, how, how is that, you know, going completely the opposite of really anything you had done before and making it, you know, it has a little, you know, more of a heartfelt type thing. And, you know, there's some real emotional scenes mm-hmm. as opposed to just straight violence, you know? Well, I, I always want to grow. And, and, you know, of course, Toe Tag, we make horror movies. Right. That's what we do. But, uh, you know, we're kind of our own genre. Mm-hmm. You know, I always say that Totec spreads the sickness, and what we want to do is we want to spread the sickness and the way that we show violence and the way that we tell stories. Celotersco is just one of those stories that, you know, we were all fascinated by because uh, at the time, you know, Totec was hit really hard because, you know, we were known as Totec Pictures. Right. But we had a problem where we actually had to kill the company and become Totag Inc. So that that's why you know some people still call us Totag Pictures, and for, it's you know they've been right. calling them calling me that for years. But you know, on I'm incorporated as Totag Inc. now, right? Um, and Celotrisco is going to be the first movie, and that's in the idea behind Celotrisco with not knowing what's going on. Mm-hmm. And your mind being fucked up and not being able to help yourself and relate was all stuff Totec was going through. Right. You know, we didn't know what was happening with us. Like, we had, we had to close down our business. It was financially hurting us with our lawyers and everything because we had to go through this whole big, huge thing because our credit card company fucked up uh, our routing number. Mm. And, like, be- they were such a huge corporation... Uh, you know, Totag is this itty bitty little thing. It was just right. like, either you need to pay, you know, we're suing you for this. And it's like, well, what the fuck? And, you know, my lawyer was just like, kill it. He's like, he's like, kill Totag. Hmm. And it was very hard. But yeah, we, I can imagine. But we had to kill Totag and not get sued. You know? How tough was that? <laughs> it, was, it was devastating. The baby you'd built, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you work so hard building something and. You know, all of us having to get together and be like, okay, well, do we still do toe tag or, or what? And, um, you know, toe tag Inc. was, it was a, this was a new opportunity because now, like, instead of just pigeonholing ourselves as toe tag pictures, toe tag Inc. can do screen printing, toe tag Inc. can do music, toe tag Inc. can do whatever we want it to do. Right. And when I introduce myself, it's, hey, what's up? I'm Fred from toe tag. Right. Like, you know, and that's what sticks. Everybody knows us as toe tag. If you want to say toe tag pictures, toe tag ink, whatever. Yeah. We're toe tag. Okay. We're the, we are toe tag. How is it like working with uh, Camille Keaton on oh, that flick? Oh, my God. Amazing. She's, she's awesome in the movie. She's like. amazing. Um, it was very important for toe tag to, you know, have a movie star in this movie. Right. But who do we get? And... You know, I'm friends with a lot of genre actors, mm-hmm. but uh, it it needed to be somebody that can fit into the family. Totag is very much a family, right? Um, and for this person to come in and be in our world, it needed to be somebody that you know one also had the same clout as Totag. Right. And Camille Keaton was on top of the list. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she wasn't acting much at the time. I ran into her at a few conventions. You know, I, w- I was in love with her when I saw the movies back in the back in the day. 
And when I finally was like, all right, we're going to we're gonna get Camille Keaton, and I've contacted her, and she was interested. It was just a dream come true. And she's one of my best friends to this day, and, um, you know, I love her to death. There was a little lot of credibility to it that she d- didn't do a lot of acting. Like you said, she's not one of the, you know, these horror stars, they'll come film a, you know, two-day cameo in your flick. And yeah, then, you know, that's she not hadn't what, been in a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. I wanted, yeah. I, you know, I remember when she first read the script, she's like, oh, my God, I have so many lines. Right. And it, she really had to prepare. You know, this was so, she inv- had to invest herself. And I told her, I'm like, Camille, if I wanted just for you to come in for a day, I wouldn't even have used. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I want this is a vehicle for you. Yeah. And now Camille's doing more stuff. You know, mm-hmm. and, and it's, it's it's really great because every time Camille gets a movie or something, she'll call me and yeah. you know, and just to get my advice about things That's because cool. you know she loved the family that was created for her. Right. Top Tech. Now, when you sit down to write, I know some writers, I'm, I know I do, have kind of go-to writing music mm-hmm. that you listen to and you write. What what do you pop in when it's time to sit down and pound the keyboard for a while? Uh, I watch TV. Really? You know, my wife hates it huh. because, you know, I'm a multitasker. I can literally, like, watch TV and work and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I have three screens open or whatever and I'm, right. I jump back and forth. It's kind of, I don't know if it's like an ADD kind of thing or whatever, but... Uh, I, I'm influenced by so much. Right. So if something on the TV clicks and filters through my brain, right. you know, maybe that gets in there. Okay. Or whatever. It's it's it, w- even when I was a little kid, I would like do my homework. I'd have the TV on. I'd be watching it. I'd do a little bit of homework. I'd be watching it. I'd be doing a little bit of homework. I'd be listening to it. Um, again, just feeding information. Right. right. I have a pr- really good memory. Um. And remembering dates, remember stuff, and it's all, it's a lot of visuals. So if I see something once, I pretty mm-hmm. much remember. Okay. Pretty much remember it. This man thinks getting stuck in your head and music. Who was responsible for the insanely catchy mask head theme song? Danny Inks, who is uh, the lead one of the lead actresses along with Shelby mm-hmm. in Mask Head, is a singer. Okay, and. You know, I love her voice, and we went into the studio where we did the sound for Maskhead. It wasn't a movie sound place. It was a music sound place. Okay. And the same guys that did the Maskhead sound did, same, did the Cell Terska as well. Okay. Um, but at the same time, Harvey Daniels, who um, was in Murder Collection, he's also in Cell Ter- also in Cell Terska as uh, Gavin. Okay. You know, I know he was, he helped out with, you know, writing some music for that mm-hmm. with her. And, uh, and Danny came in, did the vocals, and the guys at the sound place overlapped it and made it sound really cool. Nice. Now, when you broke in, it was it was kind of on the cusp of a new era for underground cinema. Yeah. Because it was, you know, things were changing a lot with, you know, emerging technology and that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. How has the business of underground cinema changed since you got into now? What, what are the major changes since then? I think, well, definitely equipment is a lot cheaper. Right. And you can do so much more. You can edit on your phone. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, the media is different where I was making VHS movies when, the, when this first started. So right. now, there's, now we're in Blu-ray. And now we're in video on demand. And now we're streaming. Yeah. So that's, that's changed. But the one thing that hasn't changed is talent. Right. And, it, you know, any, they say anybody can make a movie. But it takes talent to make a movie. Yeah. And even when I see a movie from somebody that I don't think is that great, I applaud them for, you know, trudging through the mud and the blood, sweat, and tears of what it takes to make a movie and them doing it, you know. Right. They might just not have the talent with their actors or could afford, yeah. you know, or couldn't afford a better sound or couldn't afford cool effects or this and that. And that's just money problems that we all yeah. deal with. But, uh, you know, if there is talent there and there is passion there, you know, I think uh, you can do it. Let's just say, hypothetically, someone comes to you and says, Fred, you can direct the next film in any franchise you want. Which one would you pick? Would it be, like, you know, a text, the next Chance Chainsaw or the next Hellraiser or the next Friday 13th? If you could put your spin and mark on a franchise, which one would it be? Um, I don't know. Maybe the... Whew. The Every Which Way But Loose with the monkey with Clint Eastwood. Okay. Maybe do one of those. There you go. No, I don't know. <laughs> that, that, that would be interesting. <laughs> Speaking of which, comedy. Yeah. You, uh, you've said that you know your two favorite things to watch when you're young were horror movies and titty comedies. Yes. 
Ha- you ever have any plans to make a titty comedy? I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, I I have a. I love I love drug movies. Right. So I have like a stoner movie that I really like to do. Um, that we need to see. Yeah. I want to see that. It's 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 really cool. Um, something I really like to do. It's just a, it's it's kind of like what comes at me. I mean, I have treatments to a lot of things, but my next three movies are already planned out, so I kind of know exactly what I'm doing for my next three. Okay, that's and, good I, and, I'm, and I'm very focused with them. So now, one of them is uh, we've heard you talk about is Pittsburgh body removal. Yeah. What, uh, what can you tell us about that and what to expect from that? Um, Pittsburgh body removal is going to be Totag's biggest production. Um, it's probably one of the most passionate projects that I've ever been involved in. I mean, all my movies I work really hard getting to the to the stage to make the movie. Right. But like, I actually went and picked up dead bodies. Um, I lived it, you know. Like, right. I really, I really lived it. Even though we sell Tursica, we had a soldier come in and you know fill in the blanks, a lot of stuff for us. But uh, this was really the first time that I had to get down and dirty mm-hmm. and like do something that. Even test my morals and everything like that. So it's like method directing. Yeah, kind of. but okay. I had it's something that I had to do because I really I don't, in anything that I do, I you know, toe tag is all about realism, right? And I, I feel like I would be cheating my fans if I would have just written this what I thought happens, right? You know what I mean? Like it's it's easy to kind of make believe and write, right? And there are a lot of people out there that have no clue. Yeah, you know, like maybe that does happen. Right, I can believe that. Yeah. But you know, I want people to know when they're getting stuff, something from me and something from Toe Tag, that you know, it's there is the legitimacy there, and it's been researched. So right. I'm really excited about Pittsburgh Body Removal. The idea is, I want to make an underground movie with movie stars. Okay. So I'm looking for five hundred thousand dollars to make the movie because I think that's a, a decent amount of money to pay somebody, some a- some buddies, some actors. Right. Um, and be able to make the movie on a decent production in Pittsburgh. And, uh, you know, I plan on doing the film festival circuit again. I haven't done it in years because right. Totag doesn't need to. You yeah. know, Totag is, I'm really fortunate that we have an amazing fan base and we're worldwide. And when Totag puts out a movie, uh, it, it, it goes. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's, it's a drift. A lot of filmmakers don't have that, that luxury. So, but this time. You know, people know who I am, but I, w- I kind of want to like get out there and mingle and right. kiss babies and shake hands and do okay. that kind of thing again. I haven't done it since the Redson Tower. So, yep, sp- speaking of Redson Tower, the movie I finally got to see for the first time Saturday night, loved it, excellent flick, impossible to find. Yeah, but uh, you, there's a new edition coming out soon, correct? Yes, the Possession edition. Awesome. Now, uh, when when is that going to be available? Do you know? It's going to be available this spring. Um, I don't like to announce things because right. shit happens. Okay. And sometimes, you know, like maybe the edit for the documentary is not finished or right. artwork doesn't get finished. And then you're sitting there and you have all these people being like, Fred, yeah. when's the movie coming? I right. thought it was going to be released today. Or, yeah. you know, like you said you were shipping it on the 5th and now it's the 20th. And that's a big problem. Okay. And it's and that's something that Totec has always been keen on is like, you know what? Like... We're going to put something out. When we say we're putting it out, you're going to get it. So, right. um, so it's right, like coming soonish. It's coming soonish. Okay. I know it's going to be in the springtime because everything's pretty much all together. Okay. Um, but I, the goal is to make the best edition possible. And people keep asking me about Fred is going to be on Blu-ray, and the answer is no, okay. because if Totag was to do a Blu-ray, um, you know our retail price would be around forty forty dollars. Yikes. And I want people to be able to see the movie. Right. So I think you know, you know, your DVD, player, your Blu-ray player will upconvert the the yeah. DVD. The movie will look just as great, and uh, you were you can still spend fifteen bucks or whatever that we're going to charge for it. Right. Uh, when we were talking earlier, you were telling us a story about working on the Temptations. You were mm-hmm. talking about working on Dogma. Where is the most surprising, unexpected place someone might see a Fred Vogel credit? The, the thing, one thing you worked on that people would never expect you to work on. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, you know, it probably it probably was like the Temptations or, or Dog, right? Um, you know, I help out on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I, I give a lot of people advice. Right, it's something that like I really take pride in. Is if anybody has questions, you know, people when people write me on Facebook or an email, I'm uh, how do you make blood or how do you do this? I'm always trying to help because. I really think that it's important to teach. 
Right. I was a teacher. You know, I used to teach at Tom Thompson these makeup school. Yeah. And uh, you know, when you teach, things grow, and it's not to be all hippie esque, but like it's you know, if we all grow positive and we all help each other, right. you know, this is this will be a better place. Yeah. Instead of being selfish and negative and not, you know, helping people. Right. And we another thing we were talking about, like you share my twin obsessions of professional wrestling and horror movies. Yeah. And um, we kind of touched on it earlier, but what it, the connective tissue? Why are so many people into both? Because you always will see some wrestlers at a horror convention. Mm-hmm. People, you know, people are so into both of them, and they're rabid about both of them. What's the connective tissue there? Um, I really think, especially you know, guys in our generation, seeing those old blood matches right. and the horror that was those matches, and mm-hmm. watching two men beat each other is, and, and watching it, you're it's, you know, when you say you're watching something, it's a movie, right? You know, it's a moving picture, yeah. And same thing with wrestling. Obviously, it's a taped moving picture, mm-hmm. but hey, yeah. you know, you're still watching something, and you know what? You n- there might not be a uh, a Tangerine Dream soundtrack behind it, but right. there is a a chant, a this and yeah. that. So you're getting a visual stimulation. You're seeing blood. You're hearing a pulse of the audience, and it's a movie. So right. I think that's kind of why. That's, I think that's how it relates, and. Uh, Again, I think it's horror is a community. Wrestling is a community, right? And you know, it's it's pretty much the same thing. I think you know, like okay, you 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 both you know both you're they both entertain. They both uh, give to the fans. So right. I, I think it's they're just, they work hand in hand. Okay. Now, last question. I want three movies that you think. Are criminally underseen that people need to see. Um, three, three. Okay. They have to be. Can they be horror? Or whatever, what do you want them to be? Uh, make at least one of them horror. The rest of them, whatever. Okay. Um, as for a horror film, Bob Clark's Black Christmas. If okay. you have not seen it, I know it's it's a little bit mainstreamish, I guess, but it's pretty much what started the whole like POV right. killer. Um, but then I would have to say Over the Edge, uh, which was Matt Dillon's first movie. It's like a, t- uh, a teen angst kind of thing. Okay, it's one of my favorite movies ever, and a movie called The Party Animal. The Party Animal. Yes, that sounds familiar. Who's in that one? Uh, nobody. You would no, know. no one. No, okay, but it's one of the best titty comedies you'll ever see. Excellent, and I highly recommend it. Tell him Fred Vogel sent you. Seriously. I will definitely tell him. And thank you, Mister Vogel, for sitting here and talking to me. And keep it here on the Sun and Cellular Show for more interviews and support independent horror. Yes.